the phone rings. The phone rings. <laughs> and on the other end, the voice says, hello. And the voice on the other end says, could I speak to the, the woman of the home, please? At the house, please. She's busy. Well, but, uh, what about the man in the house? I hear him talking. He's busy, too. Okay, well, I mean, can't one of them come to the phone? They're talking to the fireman. Uh, all right, well, what in the world's going on? And the fireman's there at your house as well? He's talking to the policeman. Oh, come on. This is, what? I mean, what is actually going on? You have a crowd of people. Can't you get somebody to the phone? What is happening? <laughs> They're looking for me. For many, many years, that was my life. Somewhere, a broken girl with broken dreams, with sadness in her heart, wanting to be this big light. But I was hiding. I was hiding in a cave, hiding under the covers. I wrote... When I was 13, it hung on my wall till I moved away from home. Today, I have finally found me. I don't like what I see, and I don't expect you to, but I must be me in order to become the person that I am supposed to be. Being brought up in a deep-rooted Southern Baptist community, already understanding at 13 that my sexual preference was not the norm, nor did anyone talk about it, except my family, who looked at me different from the point on when they started thinking of I was strange. And there was that space. There was that space of filling that hole. So I could play two instruments. I was a concert um, player. I could play the trombone, I was in the marching band, I was All-American, I was president of the student body. I'm not intending to impress you. Oh, I was second runner-up of the homecoming queen, and I don't know how that happened. <laughs> but that's another talk for another day. But my point is not to be impressive, but to impress upon you that I couldn't fill that hole because someone had told me that the God that I worshiped, the God that I adored was not a God that would care for me. So externals didn't change that. Yes. And as I wrote that song about welcome to this place, that's not so it rhymes. It's not so it's a poem. It's because that's my heart talking to you about the many years ago when I entered a unity and it said, welcome to this place. Yes. Greeting, greeting people and, and seeing you in your eyes and no longer needing to be disguised. And that's the joy of what friendship can do in your life if you are being disguised. It doesn't mean that it's just about everybody's sexual preference. It can be about that your addiction. It could be how you're holding back. It could be how you start numbing out at 8 o'clock every night. It can be the, the, the ways in which you stay into your shadow self instead of living out loud, being disguised. It could be not being authentic or being a chameleon and that you're some way to some people and then you're another way to some other people. What would be the ways that you consider yourself being disguised? If you are a controlling personality, you are in disguise because you will control every situation and person and moment and phone call and life experience that won't happen because you are living in the illusion of control. The best thing that can happen to you and it's happened to so many people in this time of COVID when the world changed and we went on this sacred time out. It forced us to realize that we are in control of absolutely nothing. And those of us that already realize that were a little further ahead in this game that we call life. But we are not in control. 
I am so grateful. I get so emotional when I celebrate friendship because there's no words that I can tell you. As I stand here before you, I am alive because of my friends. I am alive because of my friends. I am alive because someone was brave enough to walk up to me and say, why don't you go to the Unity community here in Greenville, South Carolina, because they remind me of who you are. And so he brought the beautiful book, As a Man Speaketh, The Way Out, the Fillmore books, and there I was. And I sat there and I took the biggest breath I had ever taken up till then in my life at 19 years old because no longer do I need to be disguised. I found a tribe of people that were willing to say, do we have a God for you? And I call my friend Don Bliss every year and say, you saved my life. You saved my life. I was dying. I was dying in that corner. And so it's that space. Jackie Robinson, when he was breaking the barriers and was the first African-American baseball player, every time they would go into a new town, they would boo him. And one time he made an error And his friend Pee Wee Reese came over and put his arm on his shoulder. And all of a sudden the crowd stopped booing. And he said, for the first time ever in my career, I knew that I had a friend that was willing to stand by me. And that was what it took. And that was the difference that it made in my life. I want you to think about it this week. I don't, I I want you to think further than my stories. I want you to create your own stories. I want you to look back in your life and I want you to actually write down and journal those encounters, those moments, those experiences that somebody was before you. As Patti LaBelle would say, I was looking and you were there all the time. I want you to identify those people in your life and connect with them for the grace that they thought enough of you to be real in front of you, that they thought enough of you to tell you the truth, you see. It's a powerful thing. In Proverbs, it says that incense is a beautiful smell and blesses you, but friendship is something magical and amazing and alluring, yes? And it has this wonderful, wonderful space. When I, when I think about it and I celebrate what my parents did well and the ways that they exceeded and the ways they modeled to me, it was the joy of seeing them have friends. My father has been dead for a long time. My mother still continues to make new friends. She still has, she's like me, she still has the friends she's had since she was three and four years old, but she also continues to make new friends. It's an evolution thing, you see. It's a growth thing. It's you anchor with the people that you grew up with or that you grew up around, you, you're from your hometowns, from your areas, the people you've known through the years, and you stay connected with some of those in your life, but you also allow the space for your heart. Every year I say, beloved God, my heart is wider. I don't want to be disguised Please send me the people that I'm now supposed to meet that will allow me to be in that playing field. Bring them on, and I will be attentive. Bring them on. It's so important for the evolution of your life because you can get stagnant, you see. You can get complacent, you see. You can develop habits with people, and you can develop an energy, you know, where you don't allow the space for that. And I agree with Reverend Kimberly, I feel very honored to have Facebook friends, but few of them do I actually know. Do I actually know? 
I was surprised that Facebook picked that, but you know, they didn't call me with branding and I'm going to get off that. Okay. <laughs> Cause they might just turn this thing off. <laughs> but anyway, um, but it's about relationship and it's about the depth and it's about being present and being available. You know, I'm shocked when people answer the phone and they say, I can't talk to you right now. Right. And you're going, why did you answer? You know, or here I am, but I just have two minutes. I need to make this quick. Oh, I'm getting on to the next thing. If you want to create the richness of relationships in your life, you want to create a space. You want to create a space that you can allow room for something to unfold, for something to come out of your heart. Because if you have a box around it, you're, you're hiding and they're looking. Because you've got it all figured out. I, I love calendars. I love Google, and I love half the time they know where you're going even when you get in your car. You know, they tell you where you're going, how many minutes it's going to take. It's a very positive tool, but a calendar is not designed to rule your life. A calendar is supposed to be the tool. It's not supposed to be your GPS, your God-personalized system. And you must leave spaces for the richness. I was on the phone yesterday with a, with a new friend, and we were talking, and we're sitting there drinking our coffee, and we were on, we were, we're the baby Zoomers, okay? So we were on Zoom, and do you know the next thing we knew? Four hours had passed. Four hours had passed. But I found something within myself. I found a conversation within myself. I found a space within myself, as did she, that had never happened before. Wow. Leave space. Leave space for your life. Leave space for the love and for the moments. And also surround yourself with people that will stand up to you. Be around those people that will call you on your stuff. If you don't have someone right now, go get somebody. Because my friend that stood up to me and said, Temple, you're a real smart person. I really think you're a very smart woman. I feel the presence of God when I am around you. But that drinking alcohol has got to go. Has got to go. And I didn't, really, I didn't really respond well to what she had to say, right? I mean, you know, they call it denial for a reason. It's like, I dare you. And then I went on to say, it's because she has a lot of alcoholics in her family. She's misjudging me. Hello, you know, <laughs> when my car is hanging on the side of a tree. No, I think she had it right. I'm just saying. I didn't respond right away. I didn't say, let's go to a meeting. But I never forgot, and I could hear that echo echoing in my heart. I could hear the echo. I could hear her saying, for you to do that, it does not fit. And there you go. Sobriety found me. It found me. But somebody had to plant the seed. Yes. Rumi says that love is everywhere, and you can hear the echoes. But you have to be open to hear the echoes of your life and to be attentive to the energy and what people are bringing you in that authentic self. How are you disguised? And in which way are you willing to open up to a greater level of who you are? They've done studies out of Harvard about people that need each other. We need each other in relationship. And they did a study for 7,000 people over a course of nine years. And they saw very clearly that the people that were in relationship live longer than the people that were isolated. Live longer than the people that were just staying within themselves in their little control box, in their little safety net. But it was that relatability that kept them alive. They even did a study. Uh, some of you will appreciate this. And after I say it today, please erase it out of your consciousness. But they said that even people that ate and would eat food in an unhealthy way, if they were related, they did better than the person that was isolated just eating broccoli. 
because, I know, don't go get you Twinkies and get all excited about it, you know. <laughs> but it made a difference. It made a difference because of this relatability. This is how we are designed. This is what we are for. A friend, a connection, a life force. Wow. To be discovered. To allow the space for someone new in your life to discover you is one of the greatest gifts that you will ever witness. As God is my witness with all of my heart, I thank all those people that because of who they were, I have a life, a thriving life. And it is because they were willing to give me the time in their hearts to say, I hear you. Bless you on this amazing journey we call life and celebrate those friendships.